Howdy. Science alert! Rapidly melting glaciers are releasing a staggering payload of unknown bacteria. That's already some two days old. A glacial stream in Norway. Yeah. Meandering patterns. This kind of tool cause water and rather white sediments. Maybe you have heard me talking about these things. Fast melting glaciers are releasing staggering amounts of bacteria into rivers and streams, which could transform icy ecosystems, scientists warn. In a study of glacial runoff from 10 sites across the northern hemisphere, Researchers have estimated that continued global warming over the next 80 years could release hundreds of thousands of tons of bacteria into environments downstream of receding glaciers. We think of glaciers as a huge store of frozen water, but the key lesson from this research is that there are also ecosystems in their own right. Microbiologist and study author Orwin Edwards of Aberystwyth University in the UK told the BBC Glaciers are masses of ice creeping ever so slowly towards the sea, carving out mountainous valleys as they go. Yet there is more to the flow than frozen water, with minerals, gases and organic materials trapped in a one-way slide that could take tens of thousands to millions of years to terminate. So obviously he is quite much trapped within certain paradigms. But we won't dive into that now because it will take hours. Studying the contents of glaciers is like opening the door to another time in history. Microbes entombed inside them could be a rich source of useful new compounds such as antibiotics. However, the researchers behind this new study say melting glaciers are releasing tons upon tons of bacteria faster than scientists can possibly catalogue them. Led by glacial Hydrologist Ian Stevens of Aarhus University in Denmark, the team sampled surface melt water from 10 glaciers across the Northern Hemisphere, in the European Alps, Greenland, Svalbard and the far reaches of the Canadian Arctic. Finding an, on average tens of thousands of microbes in each milliliter of water. They estimate that more than a hundred thousand tons of bacteria could be expelled into glacial meltwaters over the next 80 years, not including the glaciers in the Himalaya Hindu Kush region of Asia. That's equivalent to 650,000 tons of carbon released per year into rivers, lakes and fjords and oceans across the northern hemisphere. Though it depends on how fast the glaciers melt and how fast we curb emissions. Under the middle of the road emission scenario, that would still see global temperatures rise between 2 and 3 degrees. Masses of bacteria in meltwater are predicted to peak within decades before declining or potentially disappearing entirely as glaciers recede, the researchers found. The number of microbes released depends closely on how quickly the glaciers melt, and therefore how much we continue to warm the planet. But the mass of the microbes released is vast, even with moderate warming. Yes. The researchers collecting samples on the western edge of the Greenland ice sheet. Yeah, this would be a very interesting place to go around one and then, you know, even having equipment to make research. Uh, I would be in. Earlier this year, scientists realized that Arctic, is al Arctic ice is already thinning faster than expected. Now we have once again the timeline issue. Earlier this year. So they didn't notice this, like, you know, 50 years ago, this year thinning faster than expected. Yeah, there's a chicken sitting on my shoulder reading. 
Other research suggests that the some that some glaciers have already passed a tipping point where meltwater is slowing to a trickle as glacial runoff steadily declines. Microbes in meltwater can fertilize downstream ecosystem, but these may be sensitive environments or catchments used by communities that depend on glacial runoff as water source. <laughs> yeah, she's very interested. The researchers didn't study individual strains of bacteria. Actually, I want to go back to that. But these may... Microbes in meltwater can fertilize downstream ecosystems, but these may be sensitive environments or catchments used by communities that depend on glacial runoff as a water source. Italy, France, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, and so on. And these were just a few, and just from Europe, so... Glaciers and the wells of water in general. This is where people live. The researchers didn't study individual strains of bacteria, only estimated their combined biomass, so they could not identify any species that might pose a threat to human health. Nor did they determine whether microbes were active, dormant, damaged or dead. The risk is probably very small, but it requires careful assessment, Edwards told Stefan Messenger at the BBC. Without further studies, we also don't know the sudden influx of microbes could contribute to further environmental change. Researchers expect it could have a profound effect on the productivity and biodiversity of microbial microbial communities, as well as biochemical cycles. Ha! Huh. That's very interesting. I wrote an email yesterday to someone. It was very long. Let's see if there's what he answers. Because, like, I'm not a chemist. I'm not a scientist, you know. I'm just some random dude talking to chickens. And uh, somehow it struck me yesterday or two days ago already. So I had to write, I had to somehow ask. But anyway, <laughs> very interesting. On top of that, bacteria and algae or algae found in icy environments usually contain pigments to shield themselves from damaging sunlight. But these pigments in absorbing solar energy could add to warming that is already accelerating glacial ice loss. Although more research is needed to assess the downstream effects of glacial meltwater laden with microbes, these warnings should, shouldn't be taken lightly. Humans' thirst for water and unabated industrial activity has reshaped the global water cycle in ways we're only just beginning to comprehend. This also means slight fluctuations in it will have wide range uh, effects. And they are probably bigger than many can comprehend. Over the coming decades, well, let me just take one example. Nuclear power plants, they need water in order to function, most of them. So if there's no water, there is no nuclear power plant functioning. That's just one example. Over the coming decades, the forecast peak water from Earth's mountain glaciers means we need to improve our understanding of the state and fate of ecosystems on the surface of glaciers, says glaciologist and study author Tristan Erwin Fünn at the Aberystwyth University. With a better grasp of that picture, we could better predict the effects of climate change on glacial surface surfaces and catchment bio Geochemistry. This probably this was uh, 
so mountain water and such i just wanted to show a few pictures because i have a bunch of them living rock and mammoth hot springs yellowstone national park america which most of you might know seems to be a volcano this is how it looks mammoth springs and then we go to the petrified spring in the french alps in the french alps europe so these two have some similarities that's not straightly related to the whole thing but basel had experienced in somewhat 30th century 14 in the halfway bigger quake 6.5 or something there is activity going on there and also wisp switzerland which is here there has been big quakes and somehow the activity is ramping up so just to know there are two hot spots there are more here is one other very interesting and i also have to take that again white rivers white river white rivers two or three or four however you want to call it here's one too Mount St. Helens, USA, which is a volcano. Nalchik, Russia. White rivers. Momo, France. A white river attached to a glacier. As we basically have also in Mount St. Helens. Or on Mount St. Helens. And there is like plenty of other white rivers all over the place. Italy. Germany, mountain water, mountains are quite likely created through electromagnetic discharge events and water was playing such an important role that some of the tracks the water had as a way, a pillar, it was the lightning strike covered with water in a way. And they remained, they got vit vitrified and they still work today. That's why we have all those springs up in the mountains. And if the circumstances are right, the spring of the water will form a glacier. So basically, and we all also have to talk about cryptodomes, well, source domes, also called, like there are many in Japan. There are a few known ones in Europe. Two are very, very close to the Lake Constance, where we have pile dwellings, caves. And not too far away is also Kaiserstuhl Vulcano, and between is the Rhine River connecting them all. A lightning strike penetrated through the crustal mantle and made a connection either to the water or to the magma or both. To the hot within the ground. We have iron wells. Basically in front or as a part of the Alps. Kraftort creamy Wasser in Switzerland. Not too far, 33 kilometers straight measured. We have Glacier 3000, Le Diable, Le Diable in Switzerland. I have been there many years ago. And there is this one picture on Google Earth visible from the ice cave, which you can go there to visit if it's open. Maybe at the moment it's not possible since there has been a fire on top of the hill. A part of the facility burnt down for whatever reason. And there is this red stuff within the glacial ice layers. It might be Sahara sand, it might be algae, it might be whatever. 
but we don't know. It might be also iron deposits in the glacier, since not too far away we have a well where is iron containing water pouring out of the mountain. A place of power. So, if there would be iron containing water pouring out of on top of a mountain and we take all those telluric currents, electromagnetic environment changes, lightning strikes and electric fields within nature into account and charge accumulates on peaks. Maybe just some of the circuits of the facility got overjuiced and burned down through to natural induced electricity is accumulated at some peak which happened to be this mountain station of that whatever you call it where you can it's hanging on wires and you can just drive on top of a mountain it's very impressive and there might be also whatever living things be in this ice but i leave it here something about glaciers once again Thanks. Bye.